Powerful processes. Ripping else. If you only do one thing with the knowledge of the secret use gratitude until it becomes your way of life. Drive Joe Vital as soon as you start to feel different about what you already have, you will start to attract more of the good things. More of the things you can be grateful for. You could look around and say, well, I don't have the car I want. I don't have the house I want. I don't have the spouse I want. I don't have the health I want woe. Back up, back up. Those are all the things you don't want. Focus on what you already have that you're grateful for. And it might be that you have the eyes to read this. It might be the clothes that you have. Yes, you might prefer something else and you might get something else pretty soon, if you start feeling grateful for what you have. Many people who order their lives rightly in all other ways are kept in poverty by their lack of gratitude. It is impossible to bring more into your life if you are feeling ungrateful about what you have. Why? Because the thoughts and feelings you emit as you feel ungrateful are all negative emotions. Whether it is jealousy, resentment, dissatisfaction, or feelings of not enough those feelings cannot bring you what you want. They can only return to you more of what you do not want. Those negative emotions are blocking your own good coming to you. If you want a new car but you are not grateful for the car you have, that will be the dominant frequency you are sending out. Be grateful for what you have now. As you begin to think about all the things in your life you are grateful for, you will be amazed at the never-ending thoughts that come back to you of more things to be grateful for. You have to make a start, and then the law of attraction will receive those grateful thoughts and give you more just like them. You will have locked into the frequency of gratitude and all good things will be yours. The daily practice of gratitude is one of the conduits by which your wealth will come to you. Lee Brower Wealth Trainer A&D Specialist, Author and DTGR. I think everybody goes through times when they say, things aren't working right, or, things are going had. Once, when there were some things going on in my family, I found a rock, and I just sat holding it. I took this rock, I stuck it in my pocket, and I said, every time I touch this rock I'm going to think of something that I'm grateful for. So every morning when I get up in the morning, I pick it up off the dresser, I put it in my pocket, and I go through the things that I'm grateful for. At night, what do I do? I empty my pocket, and there it is again. I've had some amazing experiences with this idea. A guy from South Africa saw me drop it. He asked, what is that? I explained it to him, and he started calling it a gratitude rock. Two weeks later I got an email from him in South Africa. And he said, my son is dying from a rare disease. It's a type of hepatitis. Would you send me three gratitude rocks? They were just ordinary rocks I found off the street, so I said, sure. I had to make sure that the rocks were very special, so I went out to the stream, picked out the right rocks, and sent them off to him. Four or five months later I get an email from him. He said, my son's better, he's doing terrific. And he said, but you need to know something. We've sold over a thousand rocks at $10 a piece as gratitude rocks, and we've raised all this money for charity. Thank you very much. So it's very important to have an attitude of gratitude. The great scientist Albert Einstein revolutionized the way we view time, space, and gravity. From his poor background and poor beginnings, you would have thought it impossible for him to achieve all that he did. Einstein knew a great deal of the secret, and he said, thank you hundreds of times each day. He thanked all the great scientists who had preceded him for their contributions, which had enabled him to learn and achieve even more in his work, and eventually become one of the greatest scientists who has ever lived. One of the most powerful uses of gratitude can be incorporated in the creative process to turbocharge what you want. As Bob Proctor advised in the first step of the creative process, 
Ask. Start by writing down what you want. Begin each sentence with, I am so happy and grateful now that. And you fill in the rest. When you give thanks as though you have already received what you want, you are emitting a powerful signal to the universe. That signal is saying that you have it already because you are feeling gratitude for it now. Each morning before you get out of bed, make it a habit to feel the feelings of gratitude in advance for the great day ahead, as though it is done. From the moment I discovered the secret and formulated the vision to share this knowledge with the world, I gave thanks every day for the film The Secret, which would bring joy to the world. I had no idea how we would bring this knowledge to the screen, but trusted that we would attract the way. I stayed focused and held to the outcome. I felt deep feelings of gratitude in advance. As that became my state of being, the floodgates opened and all the magic flowed into our lives. For the magnificent team of The Secret, and for me, our deep, heartfelt feelings of gratitude continue to this day. We have become a team that resonates gratitude with every moment, and it has become our way of life. Visualization is a process that has been taught by all the great teachers and avatars throughout the centuries, as well as by all the great teachers living today. In Charles Hanel's book, The Master Key System, written in 1912, he gives 24 weekly exercises to master visualization. More important, his complete master key system will also help you become the master of your thoughts. The reason visualization is so powerful is because as you create pictures in your mind of seeing yourself with what it is you want, you are generating thoughts and feelings of having it now. Visualization is simply powerfully focused thought in pictures, and it causes equally powerful feelings. When you are visualizing, you are emitting that powerful frequency out into the universe. The law of attraction will take hold of that powerful signal and return those pictures back to you, just as you saw them in your mind. Drive Dennis W-A-I-T-L-E-Y I took the visualization process from the Apollo program, and instituted it during the 1980s and 90s into the Olympic program. It was called Visual Motor Rehearsal. When you visualize then you materialize. Here's an interesting thing about the mind, we took Olympic athletes and had them run their event only in their mind, and then hooked them up to sophisticated biofeedback equipment. Incredibly, the same muscles fired in the same sequence when they were running the race in their mind as when they were running it on the track. How could this be? Because the mind can't distinguish whether you're really doing it or whether it's just a practice. If you've been there in the mind you'll go there in the body. Think about the inventors and their inventions, the Wright brothers and the plane. George Eastman and film. Thomas Edison and the light bulb. Alexander Graham Bell and the telephone. The only way anything has ever been invented or created is because one person saw a picture in his mind. He saw it clearly, and by holding that picture of the end result in his mind, all the forces of the universe brought his invention into the world, through him. These men knew the secret. These were men who had utter faith in the invisible, and who knew the power within them to leverage the universe and bring the invention into the visible. Their faith and their imagination have been the cause of the evolution of humankind, and we reap the benefits of their creative minds every single day. You may be thinking, I do not have a mind like these great inventors. You may be thinking, they could imagine those things, but I can't. You could not be further from the truth, and as you continue on this great discovery of the knowledge of the secret, you will learn that you not only have the mind they had, but much more. Mike Dooley when you revisualizing, token UVE got that picture playing out in your mind, always and only dwell upon the end result. Here's an example. Look at the back of your hands, right now. Really look at the back of your hands, the color of your skin, the freckles, the blood vessels, the rings, the fingernails. Take in all those details. Right before you close your eyes, see those hands, your fingers, wrapping around the steering wheel of your brand new car. Drive Joe Vital this is such a holographic experience so real in this moment that you don't even feel as if you need the car, because it feels like you have it already. Dr. Vital's words brilliantly sum up the place you want to get yourself to when visualizing. 
When it feels like a jolt as you open your eyes in the physical world, your visualization became real. But that state, that plane, is the real. It is the field where everything is created, and the physical is just the result of the real held of all creation. That's why you won't feel as if you need it anymore, because you tuned in and felt the real field of creation through your visualization. In that field, you have everything now. When you feel that, you will know it. 84 The secret Jack can feel it's the feeling that really creates the attraction, not just the picture or the thought. A lot of people think, if I think positive thoughts, or if I visualize having what I want, that will be enough. But if you're doing that and still not feeling abundant, or feeling loving or joyful, then it doesn't create the power of the attraction. Bob Doyle You put yourself in the feeling place of really being in that car. Not I wish I could get that car, or, someday I'll have that car, because that's a very definite feeling associated with that. It's not in the now. It's in the future. If you stay in that feeling, it will always be in the future. Michael Bernard Beckwith now that feeling and that inner seeing will begin to be an open doorway through which the power of the universe will begin to express what this power is I cannot say. All know is that it exists. Jack Canfield our job is not to figure out the how. The how will show up out of a commitment and belief in the what. Mike Dooley the hows are the domain of the universe. It always knows the shortest, quickest, fastest, most harmonious way between you and your dream. Drive Joe Vital if you turn it over to the universe, you will be surprised and dazzled by what is delivered to you. This is where magic and miracles happen. The teachers of the secret are all aware of the elements you bring into play when you visualize. As you see the picture in your mind and feel it, you are bringing yourself to a place of believing you have it now. You are also implementing trust and faith in the universe because you are focusing on the end result and experiencing the feeling of that, without giving any attention whatsoever to how it will come about. Your picture in your mind is seeing it as done. Your feelings are seeing it as done. Your mind and your entire state of being are seeing it as already happened. That is the art of visualization. Drive Joe Vital you want to do this virtually daily, but it should never be a chore. What's really important to the whole secret is feeling good. You want to feel exhilarated by this whole process. You want to be high, happy, in tune, as much as possible. Everyone has the power to visualize. Let me prove it to you with a picture of a kitchen. For this to work, first of all you have to get all thoughts of your kitchen out of your mind. Do not think of your kitchen. Totally clear your mind of pictures of your kitchen with its cupboards, refrigerator, oven, tiles, and color scheme. You saw a picture of your kitchen in your mind, didn't you? Well, then you just visualized. Everyone visualizes whether he knows it or not. Visualizing is the great secret of success. Here's a tip about visualizing, which Dr. John Demartini shares in his Breakthrough Experience seminars. John said that if you create a static picture in your mind it can be difficult to hold that picture, so create lots of movement in your picture. To illustrate this, imagine your kitchen again, and this time imagine yourself entering that kitchen, walking to the refrigerator and putting your hand on the door handle, opening the door, looking inside, and finding a cold bottle of water. Reach in and grab it. You can feel the coldness on your hand as you grasp the bottle. You have the bottle of water in one hand, and you use your other hand to close the refrigerator door. Now that you are visualizing your kitchen with detail and movement it's easier to see and hold the picture, isn't it? We all possess more power and greater possibilities than we realize, and visualizing is one of the greatest of these powers. Marcy Shimoff The only difference between people who live in this way, who live in the magic of life, and those who don't is that the people who live in the magic of life have habituated ways of being. They've made a habit of using the law of attraction, and magic happens with them wherever they go. Because they remember to use it. They use it all the time, not just as a one-time event. 
Here are two true stories that clearly demonstrate the powerful law of attraction and the immaculate matrix of the universe in action. The first story is about a woman named Jeannie, who bought a DVD of The Secret and was watching it at least once a day so that she would absorb the message right into the cells of her body. She was particularly impressed with Bob Proctor, and she thought it would be wonderful to meet him. One morning Jeannie collected her mail, and to her utter amazement the mailman had accidentally delivered Bob Proctor's mail to her address. What Jeannie didn't know is that Bob Proctor lived just four blocks away from her. Not only that, but Jeannie's house number was the same number as Bob's. She immediately took the mail to deliver it to the correct address. Can you imagine her utter delight when the door opened and Bob Proctor was standing before her? Bob is rarely at home as he travels all over the world teaching, but the matrix of the universe knows only perfect timing. From Jeannie's thought of how wonderful it would be to meet Bob Proctor, the law of attraction moved people, circumstances, and events throughout the universe so that it happened. The second story involves a 10-year-old boy named Colin, who had seen and loved the secret. Colin's family made a week-long visit to Disney World, and on their first day they experienced long lines at the park. So that night, just before Colin fell asleep, he thought, tomorrow I'd love to go on all the big rides and never have to wait in line. The next morning, Colin and his family were at the gates of Epcot Center as the park opened, and a Disney staff member approached and asked them if they would be Epcot's first family of the day. As first family they would be given VIP status, a special escort by a staff member, and walk-on passes for every big ride in Epcot. It was everything and more that Colin had wished for. Hundreds of families were waiting to enter Epcot that morning, but Colin didn't have the slightest doubt as to why his family had been chosen first family. He imagined discovering at the age of 10 that the power to move worlds lies within you. Nothing can prevent your picture from coming into concrete form except the same power which gave it birth yourself. James Ray people hold that for a while, and they're really a champion at it. They say, I'm fired up. I saw this program and I'm going to change my life. And yet results aren't showing. Beneath the surface it's just about ready to break through, but the person will look just at the surface results and say, this stuff doesn't he work. And you know what? The universe says, your wish is my command, and it disappears. When you allow a thought of doubt to enter your mind, the law of attraction will soon line up one doubtful thought after another. The moment a thought of doubt comes, release it immediately. Send that thought on its way. Replace it with I know I am receiving now. And feel it. John A.S.S.A.R.A.F. Knowing the law of attraction, I wanted to really put it to use and to see what would happen. In 1995 I started to create something called a vision board, where I take something that I want to achieve, or something that I want to attract, like a car or a watch or the soul mate of my dreams, and I put a picture of what I want up on this board. Every day I would sit in my office and I would look up at this board and I would start to visualize. I would really get into the state of having already acquired it. I was getting ready to move. We put all the furniture, all the boxes, into storage and I made three different moves over a period of five years. And then I ended up in California and bought this house, renovated it for a year, and then had all the stuff brought from my farmer home five years earlier. One morning my son Keenan came into my office, and one of the boxes that was sealed for five years was right at the doorstep. He asked, what's in the boxes, daddy? And I said, those are my vision boards slash he then asked, what's a vision board? I said, well, it's where I put all my goals up. I cut them out and I put all my goals up as something that I want to achieve in my life. Of course at five and a half years old he didn't understand, and so I said, sweetheart, let me just show you, that'll be the easiest way to do it. I cut the box open, and on one vision board was a picture of a home that I was visualizing five years earlier. What was shocking was that we were living in that house. Not a house like it I actually bought my dream home, renovated it, and didn't even know it. 
I looked at that house and I started to cry, because I was just blown away. Keenan asked, why are you crying? I finally understand how the law of attraction, P-O-W-E-R-F-U-L processes, works. I finally understand the power of visualization. I finally understand everything that I've read, everything that I've worked with my whole life, the way I've built companies. It worked for my home as well, and I bought our dream home and didn't even know it. Imagination is everything. It is the preview of life's coming attractions. You can let your imagination go wild with a vision board, and place pictures of all the things you want, and pictures of how you want your life to be. Make sure you put the vision board in a place where you see it and look at it every day as John Asaraf did. Feel the feelings of having those things now. As you receive, and feel gratitude for receiving, you can remove pictures and add new ones. This is a wonderful way to introduce children to the law of attraction. I hope the creation of a vision board inspires parents and teachers worldwide. One of the people on the secret website forum put a picture of the secret DVD on his vision board. He had seen the secret but didn't own his own copy. Two days after he created his vision board, I felt inspired to post a notice on the secret forum giving away DVDs to the first 10 people who posted. He was one of the 10. He had received a copy of the secret DVD within two days of putting it on his vision board. Whether it is a DVD of the secret or a house, the joy of creating and receiving is magnificent.